Photoshop running slow or if you're finding it's lagging, well today I'm going to show you how you can fix that and I'm going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it is the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So in this tutorial guys, I'm going to show you how you can optimize and increase the performance of Photoshop on your computer. Now when it comes to trying to fix Photoshop or trying to speed it up, there's only a certain amount of limitations that you can do and you can try and optimize it for your type of workflow. Now if you've got a slow computer or if you've got an old computer this might not necessarily work but it is worth giving it a go just to see if it does any improvement. If you have got a new computer and you're noticing you've got lag especially if you've just opened the files or if you're trying to save them then these particular tips that I've got today will hopefully fix that problem and speed up Photoshop really really quickly and stop it from lagging. So without further ado guys let's get started. Right guys so once you get onto computer make sure that you've got Photoshop loaded up so I've got it loaded up just down here and what you want to do is go to your preferences. So we're going to go to Photoshop, we're going to go to preferences here and then when we in our preferences, we want to drop down to where it says performance. Now, there are two sections we want to have a look at. We want to look at the memory and cache, and we also want to look at memory usage. So we'll look at memory usage first, as it's the top one. So memory usage is all depending on how much RAM is available on your computer. And it shows you here. So I've got 29,141 megabytes of RAM. But again, it does depend on what type of computer you're using, or depend on how much RAM you've got. And then what we've got the letter at the bottom here is you've got a slider which is called let Photoshop use and then a certain number here and then a percentage. Now it's the percentage that we want to look at because the higher the percentage, the more RAM is Photoshop is allowed to use. Now if you're someone that only uses Photoshop and no other programs at the same time, you can have this number at a higher percent, but I wouldn't go higher than 90%. But if you are someone that uses a lot of programs at the same time, such as Illustrator, InDesign and Photoshop, using it all simultaneously, then you're probably going to want to have this number around 70%, simply because you don't want Photoshop to use all the RAM and not let any other programs use it. So it, again, this depends on your performance and workflow, on how you work, but because I work using lots of different programs, I have this number around 70. But if you are finding Photoshop is running slow, you can always increase this number. And then we've got this history and cache. Now history is all to do with how many um, backspaces you can do. So let's say you make a mistake and you want to go back, you would press Command Z. And basically your history is how many times you can press that. So my history status is 50. But for instance, you can increase it to 1000 or you can increase it to one. It really does depend on how you work. But we've got three buttons here and this all kind of has three different types of default. So you've got web UI design, default and photos and huge pixel dimensions. And depending on how you work or what type of work you do in Photoshop or depending on how you want to optimize Photoshop for your workflow. So we've got web UI design, is if somewhat if you're one someone that um, creates lots and lots of layers using small files. So if your files are no larger than a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. We've got the middle one, which is default photos. This is the one that I work out because I do photo manipulation and surrealism art. So I use a mixture of lots of layers and large files, but it you know it alternates. And then we've got huge pixel dimensions. Now this is if you are someone that uses very little layers, but the photos are very large. So for instance, if you were creating a panoramic or if you were creating something that um, if you wanted to stitch lots of photos together and you can see it here using the information. So you can see the cache level is set to two or higher will optimize GPU performance. If we click on here, as you can see, it says the same thing but what it will do is it will change your cache level and your history status depending on what you uh, you click on here. 
So it really does depend on what type of work that you do to depend on how you can optimize your workflow. So if we click on default photos for me, as you can see, it will change these numbers here. Lovely. But if you're working in Photoshop and you're noticing after quite a few layers, it's starting to lag. So I'm just going to click on a piece of work that I've been working on recently. And as you can see, it's taking a while to load up because I have got so many layers in here and they're all doing color correction. So what we can do is if you're finding that the photo is starting to be really laggy, what you can do is go up to edit. You can go to where it says purge and then you can click where it says all. Now purging is a way of getting rid of all your history and all of your cache at the same time. A cache is another word for a computer can save a certain, if you do something quite a lot, like for instance use the brush tool, it will save the brush tool so it can load up quicker. But you'll find that other software might be running slower. So you can remove your cache and start from a clean cache by clicking this button. And what that will do is that will speed up Photoshop again but this is an action that cannot be undone. So if you have got a lot of things saved in your history, it won't be able to revert back to it. So only do this if you're absolutely happy with the photo so far, but it is running slow. And there we go, guys. So that is how you can increase the performance of Photoshop and optimize it for your type of workflow. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time, guys, keep creating.